today's shanka samadhan episode is on nuclear stability and the question is asked by a student anit kumar gorai from bolpur west bengal studying under icsc curriculum he says that few days ago i was going through my chemistry textbook and it was found elements with n by p ratio 1.5 and above are radioactive so this is the textbook version that a elements with n by p ratio 1.5 and above are radioactive now anit asks that but for carbon 14 c14 isotope of carbon it is invalid as the np ratio stands to be around 1.33 in carbon 14 there are 6 protons and 8 neutrons so neutron number divided by proton number will be 8 by 6 which is 1.33 okay so that is uh, the problem then he has done some youtube studies and he says that i got familiar with nuclear forces through a few short uh, form youtube videos the concept stands to be when the n by p ratio is more than 1.5 the nuclear force is just not enough to consider to counter the electronic repulsion due to protons or or to hold the nucleus so from the youtube videos that he had seen he gets the impression that uh, if n by p ratio is more than 1.5 then the nuclear force is just not enough to counter the electronic repulsion due to protons and to hold the nucleus so the first thing to understand is adding more neutrons will not increase repulsion ulam repulsion it will not decrease uh, nuclear attraction in fact it will increase nuclear attraction because if you have a nucleus let us say you have a nucleus in which there are so many protons certain number of protons suppose are there and then certain numbers of neutrons are also there are also there now if i put an extra neutron what happens if i put an extra neutron what happens right now if it is bigger nucleus this proton here and this proton here they are far apart they are able to contribute to coulomb's repulsion but not to nuclear attraction because nuclear forces are short range coulomb forces are long range so this is giving you dominantly repulsion but uh, let's say this pp this is giving you dominantly attraction the distance is less nuclear force is strong coulomb repulsion is is so uh, is less if you see this np np here np there's no repulsion no coulomb repulsion it's only attraction wherever if the neutrons are far apart this one and this one okay they are far apart no nuclear force almost and no coulomb force but if you put an extra proton neutron sub, sub, somewhere suppose i put an extra neutron what i am creating i am creating either np pairs or or this nn pairs by putting this extra neutron you are only creating new nn pairs or new np pairs and uh, no question of uh, adding to repulsion you are adding to attraction right so this is true that heavy nuclei are uh, radioactive n by p is large in heavy nuclei heavy means uh, say 150 nucleons 200 nucleons 240 nucleons so those are heavy nuclei and in heavy nuclei most of the pairs will be having large distances therefore more neutrons are needed and therefore uh, this n by p is is large they are radioactive but the the lifetime 
of most of these heavy nuclei with n b n by p greater than 1.5 is in millions of years 10 lakh years or 20 lakhs years so it's as good as stable and this stability is coming because of these extra protons with extra neutrons which are which are there <laughs> so this this point should be very clearly understood that neutrons are not creating instability okay but then uh, this is not the only factor for stability there are many more factors and especially for smaller nuclei like carbon there is uh, almost no role of uh, coulomb repulsion because it's small nucleus carbon is a small nucleus only only six protons and neutrons whatever six or seven or eight whatever so the, all the pairs uh, are having small distances nuclear force is dominating over coulomb force for any of the pairs so if this is radioactive carbon 14 there has to be some other reason and what is that other reason that other reason is that protons and neutrons follow Pauli exclusion principle you know it for electrons in an atom in an atom you have a nucleus small nucleus all these protons neutrons are all inside and then you have electrons which are around around this and for those electrons you have you say that there are quantum states and a state is defined by four quantum numbers n l ml and ms so that makes a quantum state and different quantum states may have uh, different energies for some of the energies there are more than one quantum states but then in general if you take two separate quantum states the energies may be different okay now the Pauli exclusion principle is in each quantum state you can have maximum one electron either there is no electron or there is one electron nothing more than that that is Pauli exclusion principle this is also valid for nuclei this is also valid for protons and neutrons separately and for protons neutrons the energy states are like this the energy states are like this there's one quantum state this is another 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 quantum state and so on it's all all schematic don't go by whether they are equispaced or not they are different so one quantum state another quantum state another quantum state and so on energies are different now for protons and similarly for neutrons neutrons also you have the same same energy states now suppose you are talking of let's say first carbon 12 six protons and six neutrons where will the protons go here here three four five and six and then you have uh, you have six neutrons also so where are those six neutrons going here 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 and here this is carbon 12 now suppose somehow i got carbon 14 that means two more neutrons six protons and eight neutrons carbon 14 six protons and eight neutrons if you fill the six neutrons they will fill like this if you fill the eight neutrons it will fill like this neutron it has to go here and it has to go here now look at the total energy the total energy is this energy of proton plus this energy of proton plus 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 then plus this energy of neutron plus 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 up to this up to this level okay so up to this level this is the total energy by any chance by any chance one of the neutrons of this protein converts into a proton p plus 
electron plus into neutrino if that happens if neutron is converting into proton electron which is called beta minus particle is created and ejected and then this anti neutrino beta minus decay this is called beta minus decay so if this radioactive decay happens and one of these eight neutrons becomes a proton what it will become it will become 14 and one more proton will come here seven so it is nitrogen now seven and one neutron has been converted so this also becomes seven plus this beta minus and plus this anti neutron now if that decay is allowed then you you have seven protons and seven neutrons so where are those seven neutrons going one two three four five six seventh this seventh uh, proton can come here and there are only seven neutrons left this particular neutrons is converted and it is coming here it is coming here as a proton because this quantum state was empty for proton so this neutron cannot come uh, here because already one quantum state for neutron is filled so you cannot have two neutrons here so one has to go up but then if this decay takes place this becomes proton and it can come here the total energy of the nucleus is decreased for this energy now i have this energy which is less so decay this decay is reducing the energy of uh, of nucleus so if a lower energy system is available then uh, if somehow this uh, nucleus or any system is in a higher energy state it will come down so that is what is happening that is why carbon 14 is radioactive is changing it's not stable but here also the lifetime is around thousand years or so in, in that order okay but still yes it is radioactive it is changing and these beta particles are are created okay